This is cycle one, week 20, layers of the geosphere. This is a very cool uh, experiment, a very cool um, opportunity for the kids to get some hands-on uh, time uh, doing science. Before we get all the way into the science, I wanna stop and say thank you to uh, all of my viewers, everyone who is uh, watching us. Um, I am planning to do um, videos for the remaining weeks uh, for CC Cycle 1. So if you haven't already, this is a good opportunity for you to hit the subscribe button and then you'll get a notification uh, when those videos become available. But now to the fun, cool science. So parts of the geosphere. The, uh, the manual uh, has three options that they recommend. I personally think the best way to do this experiment is with a combination of options one and option three. Option two with the Play-Doh is a great idea. If you want to uh, take that option, then my suggestion would be that you pre-make the inner core piece of Play-Doh, that you bring that with you uh, for the kids to actually start with uh, as they're making. Having said that, uh, I, I would start with uh, styrofoam balls. What I, what I did um, before, before um, um, tutoring with the students, I would take your styrofoam balls, I used just a butter knife, it doesn't have to be very sharp, uh, and was able to carefully cut the styrofoam balls and, and to make two hemispheres, two halves. So this is what I would bring for the kids. Um, and then I would also bring um, some markers so that they can, uh, markers and colored pencils, uh, so that they can um, do, this, uh, do this experiment. So, and then this will be the final product. Uh, what the students will make. Um, I would suggest, strongly suggest, that you uh, make an illustration on a whiteboard or on a piece of paper or on a chalkboard, whatever you have available. Uh, my lovely assistant uh, made one here for, for this video, primarily so that I can be sure that you, you see the colors that I'm using. I'm not sure how well they're, well they're going to come across uh, on the styrofoam ball. Another little tip, I would take the styrofoam ball. Um, so this is, again, the final product, um, ultimately, pieces will be drawn here on the surface, but I would leave about half of it blank because um, I don't know if that'll come through either, but it does. the styrofoam balls don't hold the color very well. And so it gives you a place and your students a place to hold it so that they keep the mess down a little bit. Okay, ha having said that then, I would start with those halves and I would, um, I would illustrate for the students on your whiteboard or chalkboard or on a piece of paper, um, the parts. Uh, this uh, this uh, week 20 is a hands-on um, review and, and hands-on experience with the new grammar from week 13 of cycle one. I, I strongly suggest that you look at the week 13 uh, science card. Um, I think um, that it, it's very good information. It's most of the information we're going to talk about. I've seen in some of the comments people have asked for talking points or a script. Um, and I suggest to you that this is an excellent script that, if, that you could grab uh, with you if you have it and take it to class to use as a script. I would suggest you take it to class anyway, just as a point of reference uh, for the students. Okay, so with then, with our styrofoam balls, with the, the piece of paper, what you want to illustrate to the students are for the portions of the, of the geosphere that are inside the earth, the, the smallest one, the, the very center, which we're showing here in orange, is the inner core. The inner core is actually made of solid metal, primarily iron, nickel, uh, some sulfur as well. Uh, it, it is um, very, very dense. It's very, very hot. In fact, the temperature of the metals here in the inner core is approaching or maybe even exceeding the temperature of the gases on the surface of the sun. That's the kind of temperature uh, that we're talking about. Around the inner core, what I'm showing here in yellow, in yellow uh, is the outer core. The outer core is liquid metal primarily liquid iron and liquid nickel. Um, as the earth is moving around the sun, as the earth is rotating on its axis, the, the liquid outer core is actually very turbulent and, and, and moving. And that, that movement is really what uh, creates the earth's magnetic uh, field, the magnetic field that we can see and feel um, way out here on the surface uh, of the earth. Outside of the outer core, is the uh, mantle. The mantle is by far the biggest layer, and, and that's what I would why I would start with an illustration, so the kids have a sense of the relative size of, of the pieces. The mantle is, is about 85% uh, of the total volume um, of the earth, um, and this is very hot, superheated uh, rock. This, the mantle is what all of the uh, crust floats on. It's what the different continental plates float on as, as well. So the crust then is illustrated with a, a, a brown dark line, very, very thin. Again, compared, even better, you can see it here uh, in our illustration, a very thin brown line. The, the crust is about 20 miles thick, 15 to 20 miles thick under some of the, the large mountains that are on the surface of the earth. 
but even at the very bottom of the ocean, the crust is still maybe three to five miles uh, thick. So all of our world, everything that we see is really the crust uh, of the earth. And that's what we want to illustrate. So as we're thinking about the parts then of the geosphere, we have the, the inner core, which is about three quarters of the size of the moon. We have the outer core, that's liquid iron and liquid uh, nickel, and it's responsible for the Earth's magnetic field. Then we have the uh, mantle, which is the superheated uh, rock that the crust itself is floating on, and the crust is here. But that's not all of the geosphere. Parts, those are the parts of the geosphere that are within the Earth, as we, as we think of it. But the uh, other parts of this, the geosphere include the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, and the biosphere. So we need to illustrate and draw those as well. So let's go all the way out and talk about the atmosphere. The atmosphere uh, are the gases, the fluid-like gases that surround the Earth, that are held in place around the Earth due to the Earth's gravitational field. Uh, the atmosphere is primarily made up of nitrogen. Right behind it is oxygen. Um, and those are the pieces. Um, those are the two most prominent gases here, but there's many others. The atmosphere extends all the way up. So it's the atmosphere that we breathe and that we're breathing right now, but it also extends all the way up to you ultimately enter into outer space. But that whole region then uh, is, is, is the atmosphere. The hydrosphere is all of the water that's associated with the earth. The majority of the water the students should draw here on the surface. It's the salt water that is in the oceans, but it also includes the frozen water like glaciers and other, other frozen structures, the polar um, ice caps. It, it also includes um, the water of the atmosphere. It includes uh, the fresh water sources like lakes and rivers, etc. So on the surface of their, of their hemispheres, I would have the students draw first with, with brown marker a couple of land masses that are representative and then most of it again in blue. And I would have them draw some blue on each piece of land to represent a river, a stream, so that they remember that piece um, as well. So that is the hydrosphere. It's all the water associated with the earth. And then we have the biosphere, the last piece we haven't talked about. The biosphere is all of the life that's associated with the earth. Um, all of the life that's associated with the earth is primarily um, um, associated with the crust, just like the hydrosphere is. But again, there are, um, there are living things that are free floating uh, in the atmosphere uh, as well. And so the atmosphere and the hydrosphere uh, together along with the crust are where the biosphere is. And so we're part of the biosphere, so are the animals that are around us, the plants, uh, all of those things that are alive, that are sitting on the crust or in the atmosphere uh, around it. So those are the parts of the geosphere. I would start with this. I would use a whiteboard illustration. I would also um, bring some paper and some colored pencils because I would have the students replicate what, they've, what they're handling in three dimensions on the paper. There's two reasons for this. The first is that it will be much easier for the students to label the paper uh, compared to this. The only way uh, to label something like this, I think effectively would be with pre-made labels and with pens. There's a little bit of a safety hazard with using the pens. Uh, and it might be difficult for the, for the students to, to keep them there without them coming loose. Um, and let's be honest, we, we as parents, we all want our kids to have something like this um, bouncing around lost in their room or the back of the van, um, but we may not want pens with, you know, hydrosphere and mantle uh, floating around in the same way. So uh, that would be my suggestion is, is a plain piece of paper so that they can draw it and, and label it there uh, as well. That is uh, week 20, cycle one science.